Hello and welcome. It's been a while since I've done a video in the All About series, but due to viewer demand and people writing in the YouTube comments and asking me to revive it, so here I am reviving it with a bit of resuscitation. This time I have a script because it makes it much easier because my brain is getting old and so am I. When you think about spiders, you normally think of the little shudder down your spine and worry about that hairy thing creeping across your carpet. Well, what if I told you one of the cutest animals on the planet is a spider? This is all about the jumping spider. Like me, jumping spiders are undoubtedly the face of the internet and they're covered everywhere in memes. But what do you actually know about them? Spiders and other arthropods don't come up in the fossil records too often, so we have to make a few assumptions. The very first fossil we did find was in the Baltic, dating back to the Eocene epoch around 50 million years ago. So one thing we do know about spiders, they're very, very old. As of all the spiders on this planet, there are a lot. The jumping spider genus makes up for around 13% of them, with 600 genera and 6,000 separate species or more. These are only the ones that have been documented to date. Jumpers are one of the easiest spiders to identify, at least as a genus, and most of us can spot one by the way they move, even if we don't get to see them up close for a good ID. Their movement is deliberate and staccato, like the short burst of speed and then a sudden stop, maybe throwing a jump for good measure to confirm it. If we look a little closer, the shape of the body gives them away and the placement of their eyes. The two huge eyes at the front have astounding vision capabilities that allow them to see infinitely better than any other spider and most other arthropods in general, with the exception of the praying mantis. Their other eyes serve as motion detectors, which are found in most other genera of spiders. Altogether, this means that the jumper can calculate distance, which enables them to hunt with some precision without having to feel or sense their prey by other means. You could probably calculate the distance right now to that subscribe button down there and maybe click the bell at the same time. Make a jumping spider happy. Go on, tickle my bell. They're also far from stupid. Attaching a drag line like a bungee cord to their starting position in case the target is no longer there once they've set off. Talking of stupid, we often believe that the size of the brain is directly proportional to the amount of intelligence a creature has, but our understanding of complex thought processes has changed since we started poking around in the heads of people and animals. According to Fiona Cross, an arachnicologist from Christchurch University in New Zealand, it's not how big it is. But how do you use it? Obviously she's been speaking to my wife. The brain of a jumping spider is around the size of a pinhead, but recent studies suggest that they are capable of cognitive thought processes, from planning routes to capture their prey to avoiding predators. The smartest of the jumpers is in the genus Portia, which may be found in Africa, Asia and Australia in different forms. Some of them even on other spiders and have developed tactics to do so, employing different tactics depending on the scenario they're presented with, rather than using the same trick every time. I also happened upon a paper suggesting they could count. This was established by surprising the spiders, noting their reaction by changing the number of targets the spider was expected to see when it arrived at the destination. I have no idea how they worked it out, but they said they had the same counting abilities as a one-year-old child. The Porsche was also found to employ a type of mimicry when hunting other spiders. The Uriatis spider makes her home in a rolled up leaf and males stand on the outside and tap the leaf to let her know they want some spider booty. The Porsche has been found to mimic this behaviour and instead of getting herself some spider loving, she would be pounced on and eaten by the jumper, the ultimate <laughs> blocker in my opinion. Porsche also hunts orc weavers by trickery. She will ping a strand of the web to mimic a trapped insect, and when the orb weaver comes down for dinner, they end up as dinner themselves. The superior vision goes a long way in making the spider smarter than the average arthropod, 
giving them the ability to take in their surroundings and making assumptions, just like we do. Jumpers are tiny animals with the largest one, the hindless gigantus reaching around an inch in length, and the smallest being media in Clemens, whose size is hardly worth mentioning. Just like their size, the longevity is on the short side too. The world record for a jumping spider is three years and is held by a female bow jumper, Phidibus Ordax. Their eating habits are extremely varied. Not relying on one prey is a great way to ensure your survival, and jumping spiders have this in the bag. Crickets, grasshoppers, flies, other spiders are on the menu, and even other jumping spiders will be consumed if the opportunity arises, and some species have been known to include nectar in the diet as well. As they can be found in every continent, with the exception of the ones where no one lives, like Antarctica, everyone can keep one as a pet if they have so desires. We have several right here in this book room. Some native, some not. They are terribly good fun to watch and their mating dancers are world famous. Because they don't spin webs like traditional spiders, a lot of people don't think they can spin webs at all. This is untrue. Like all spiders, they are capable of producing silk. The jumpers will make themselves a nice little bachelor pad, cutely named a pup tent, often referred to, although incorrectly, as a hammock within the spider hobby. They will use this tent for in and outing when the weather is not to their liking, sleeping and even laying their eggs and molting. It's not the greatest protection, but it makes them feel better just the same. Courtship is something these spiders take very seriously. The males even bother learning how to dance, something I would never do just to impress a female. They even wear different clothing than the females, employing fancy fringes on their front legs or brightly coloured hairs called plumose hairs. Some are really bizarrely kitted out and they flash these parts at the female to grab her attention. This doesn't always work though and a male can be shooed off or worse, eaten by an unimpressed female. Such a shame this doesn't happen on a Saturday night in the city. I have a feeling it would be much quieter. And that's all I have to say about jumping spiders at this time. Maybe next time, I will delve a little deeper. Thanks for watching.